Good evening, I'm Texas Storm Chasers, Boldy and Chief David Reimer, coming up now to about 7.07 on this, the 7th of July, 2024, Sunday evening. This is going to be an update on Burl, which you can see on satellite imagery. Definitely looking more like a hurricane this evening. It is not yet a hurricane. Maximum sustained winds have now increased to 70 miles per hour. And the minimum central pressure is down to about 987 millibars. The system continues to become better organized, but there are some factors working against a more rapid intensification trend, including a just reported developing 50 mile wide eye, which in terms of, you know, eye widths or whatever, it's a big eye, which kind of works in our favor because it's going to temper the rate of intensification. If we had a small system or a small eye, that would tend to allow the system to intensify much more quickly. While a 50 mile wide eye, it requires just a lot more energy to maintain. So that is kind of working towards not having, you know, a big, big, big problem in terms of, you know, going from tropical storm to a category two, hundred mile an hour hurricane. Uh, satellite imagery, of course, it's pretty, I mean, you can't deny that. We'll turn the radar on here, and you can see, yeah, that eye wall is showing up here on radar imagery this evening. With uh, the system still moving northwest, north-northwest at about 12 miles per hour. Now 100 miles south-southeast of Matagorda, where we have storm chasers, Blake Brown, Chelsea Burnett, Stephen Jones, Trey Greenwood, they are going to be on the Texas coast. They're actually near Sargent to document the landfall of Barrel late tonight, looking like about a 1 a.m. ish landfall, so a couple hours from now. And that landfall expected to be as a category one or maybe a category two hurricane, depending on the rate of intensification. Regardless, it's going to be a hurricane. Nevertheless, it is not going to be a Harvey. Let's make that abundantly clear. It's not going to be an Ike either. We're not going to have a 25-foot storm surge. We're not going to have 140-mile-per-hour winds. We're not going to have it sitting in the state for days on end. After Burl makes landfall tonight, it is going to weaken how about weaken pretty quickly to a tropical storm as it moves north towards the eastern Brazos Valley, passing west to Houston. Now, this is going to put Houston and Galveston on the dirty side of this, which means we're going to have a storm surge move up Galveston Bay. We could have hurricane force wind gusts in the city of Houston tomorrow morning, which, yeah, just like, you know, the derecho back in April could knock out power. Uh, we're going to have, was it April or early May? Regardless. Uh, after that, System going to slowly start to turn northeast, approaching Texarkana by about 3 a.m. Tuesday, which means we're going to have issues with rain. We're going to have spin-up tornadoes, a tornado threat later tonight on the middle and upper Texas coast into southeast Texas. The Golden Triangle, that tornado threat will spread north into east Texas tomorrow afternoon and eventually even northeast Texas. But in terms of the next few hours, the most issues we're going to have are going to be along the immediate Texas Gulf Coast, Middle Texas Coast, Upper Texas Coast, the Golden Triangle. Pretty significant storm surge possible. We could see a four to seven foot storm surge from Matagorda Bay to near San Luis Pass. That is life-threatening. The potential for a one to two foot storm surge from the mouth of the Rio Grande to Baffin Bay. That's going to turn to an offshore flow once Burrow makes it north of your location. One to three feet in Corpus Christi Bay, the potential for a two to four foot storm surge from Port Aransas to Port O'Connor and from San Luis Pass, the potential for a four to six foot storm surge from San Luis Pass to Galveston Bay to High Island, up to a five foot storm surge in Sabine Pass. So again, the whole coast could have a storm surge, the potential for a life-threatening storm surge from Port Aransas all the way to near Sabine Pass on the middle and upper Texas Gulf Coast tonight into Monday morning. Uh, so again, expecting landfall about 1 a.m., give or take. So Burl has a few more hours to intensify. And again, it probably will become a hurricane here soon. And we could see maximum sustained winds of maybe 80 to 95, 100 miles an hour at landfall in a small corridor. The potential for hurricane force wind gusts tonight into Monday morning, mostly Monday morning into Monday afternoon across parts of the eastern Brazos Valley, Houston, southeast Texas, the potential for strong winds tomorrow afternoon into Tuesday morning, east Texas, the Arklatex, 
uh, northeast Texas. Burrow will weaken pretty quickly after landfall in terms of, you know, those really strong winds, but we're going to still have a lot of rain. We're going to have plenty of low-level wind shear, so the threat of tornadoes. Real quick, we're going to go back to this. I'm just going to show you the rainfall graphic real quick. I actually just have to plot it on here. You can tell I'm super organized tonight. Here, I'll just plop it on here. You'll see the latest rainfall forecast update from the Weather Prediction Center. Maybe. My computer is very angry at me tonight. Here you go. We're forecasting at this point four to eight inches of rain. Southeast Texas, the coastal plains up into the Brazos Valley, eastern North Texas, the Arklatex, northeast Texas, and east Texas. Flooding likely the potential for localized rain totals over one foot, especially along the upper Texas Gulf Coast and southeast Texas. Uh, but all this will end up being gone by, well, Tuesday evening. And again, we're also going to have storms tonight and Monday morning. Panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, moving into Texoma, North Texas, the big country. That's not associated with this tropical storm or hurricane. That's just going to be a complex of storms coming on in. That would have happened without the hurricane. But again, we will probably have an upgrade back to Hurricane Burl in the next couple of hours. And we've got chasers on the Gulf Coast. You can watch our live streaming storm chase video on the Texas Storm Chase YouTube channel. And again, if needed, we'll be doing live severe weather coverage later tonight for landfall into Monday. So as always, you can keep an eye on the sky with the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps for your device. And again, head on over to the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube for live storm chasing video from near Matagorda. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Rama. We'll have another update out like this at about 10, 15 p.m. Central Time, sooner if needed.